I don't love this term, uh, but this is the term that Eric had chosen. He calls a single request and response within Fiddler as a web session. So I'm going to show you quickly if you have not seen this before. I'm just going to pull up a page that I have here. So we'll go to this one. I just have a fictitious travel site here. I'm going to hit Control F5 just to make sure it refreshes. And I can come in and look at these requests and responses. So on the left, I see it, it asked for the home page on port 86. I can see the headers that are sent. So we'll talk about that a bit in the talk. And then we can see at the bottom here, I get some response headers and then I get the actual content. So Eric chose to call each one of those things like the one I've highlighted a web session. I'm an ASP.NET developer. So when I think sessions, I think of the series of requests you're gonna make on my site. So I just wanted to point out uh, in the book, documentation and stuff, when you hear about web sessions, that's what that means. So there's a lot that I can do with a web session. We'll look at the marking and commenting first. So I've been using Fiddler for more than a decade. And when I need to do a trace, I'm often gonna send it to another developer or I might send it to an operations person, a security person, maybe an external vendor. What I might wanna do is come in here and say, see jQuery, I'm just gonna mark that. We'll just choose orange. And I'm just gonna add a comment to that to say that, um, you know, upgrade, to latest version. So it's nice that when somebody else opens it, they're gonna immediately, set, I can say, focus on the one that's orange, they can come in here. If you scroll around, you can see the comment will be included or you can add that count if you want, you can see it here. I've got a little limited real estate here with the resolution I've got going, but it's just nice because I can mark what I'm talking about, put comments in, and it's a lot easier to find things in here. I can also look at properties. So if I want to, I can just look at some specifics about that request. So there's a lot of detail here about uh, how that request was made, how long it took for various parts. So you may want to take a look at that. And then if I go back, I'm trying to close this here with my, there we go. The other thing I want to do is I want to be able to search so this is a pretty simple, that's not a lot of requests going on from my page here. Often on our site or normal sites usually have about a hundred requests going back and forth. So sometimes it's hard to figure out why is something happening on my site? So for instance, if I were looking at this trace, I might see this uh, halflings font and I might say, I don't know why that's being requested. I don't think that I did that personally. So I wanna figure out where did that come from? So what I can do is I can just do a search. So I can say edit, find sessions, and type in halflings. And if I search, you can see it found the one in the URL. So that's pretty obvious. What I was really hoping it would do is I was hoping it would tell me who referenced this, which one of those files is the one that requested that. So an important thing, note on here is this decode compressed content. So I do a lot of web performance talks. You should be using compression on your website because it just makes the files, the text files often, you know, anywhere from 50, 75% or 80% smaller by compressing it. The problem is Fiddler by default, when it sees compressed content, it doesn't search into that content. So I need to say decode compressed content. And now if I search again, you can see that it identified Bootstrap. And that's what I wanted to know, right? I didn't put that font in myself. Bootstrap included it, and that's where I now found that. Another thing I can do, I'm just going to click here. You can actually now, that's a common enough thing that there's a uh, find the parent. So here I can come and say select parent request. And it's going to go back through similar to the search, but it's going to now pinpoint Bootstrap again and say that's the file that asked, it, asked for that font. So again, it's really helpful, especially when you have multiple developers designers, vendors, tagging. When a site gets complex, it's nice to be able to search for things like that. Another cool thing is to search for things that match this session. So I'm just going to try to make my screen here a little better. If you can hold on for a second. Okay, and what I want to do now, I'm trying to get my header over here if I can. Slide this over a little again. 
Sorry about that, but this is what I'm looking for. So it's got content types. So if I look and I see I, I have a single, say, JPEG file, if I hold down the Alt key and click on any value in a given column, so if I hold the Alt and hit JPEG, it's going to go identify all of the other JPEGs in this uh, set of requests. So that's very handy. Again, when you have 100 requests listed, it's a quick way to say, I want to see all the JavaScript files, or I want to see all the CSS files, or any set for any of those columns, I can do that alt and it'll do a similar search. So that's pretty handy.